The secret to well-being is discovering the power that is your birthright, the power to create a happier, healthier life drawn from our own vast internal resources. Join Jules and her guests as they gently guide you to shift your perspective from the familiar negative to the divinely connected, a place that will not only positively impact your world, but possibly shift the planet. It's all right here on Law of Attraction Talk Radio. Welcome to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I'm Jules from beautiful Southern California. And i got to tell you, the weather here is so beautiful. It's cooler and the air is so crisp. White billowy clouds in the sky. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is paradise. Tonight we have a terrific show for you as we talk about the science of epigenetics and cellular biology. Yep, you guessed it, the incredible Dr. Bruce Lipton is with us again, and I can promise a life-changing show backed by science that proves that humanity is so powerful that we can change anything and everything we want. So park your victimhood at the door as we discover more fascinating information about our powerful creation powers right here on Law of Attraction Talk Radio. We'll be right back. You're listening to Law of Attraction Radio Network, enhancing the well-being of millions of listeners worldwide. LOARadioNetwork.com is heard through 25 different Internet radio stations, as well as iTunes Radio, Stitcher.com, and our mobile apps. The Law of Attraction Radio Network, your trusted source of daily inspiration at LOARadioNetwork.com. Here's an update on our cruise of a lifetime to Mayan country. Royal Caribbean Cruise Line will not be raising the rates for the time being. And we have a special announcement that Lee Harris will actually be singing on the cruise. So not only do we have Law of Attraction coach Constance Arnold, astrologer Gene Wiley, channel psychic Lee Harris, we are also introducing holistic coach Enzo Giovanni to you as well. Plus, we may be tossing in a special hypnosis session on releasing the fears that block you from reaching the stars. So sign up today by going to lawofattractioncruise.com. That's lawofattractioncruise.com. Need help realizing your dreams? As a hypnotherapist specializing in the law of attraction, Jules Johnson can help you to break through your critical mind into your manifested dream. Get started today by going to lawofattractiontools.com. Set up a personal Skype video or phone session. Law of Attraction Tools is there to help you turn your desires into reality. That's lawofattractiontools.com. Okay, we are back. Dr. Bruce Lipton and I have a lot to chat about tonight, so I just want to mention that every day we fill another cabin and we get another person who books and wants a cabin mate. So if you would like to join us in our Cozumel trip on December 13th, we are still looking for men and women to fill cabins interiors as well as balconies so step outside your box and join us let the universe provide you with a brand new friend to journey with us to paradise it's all about the law of attraction you will not only attract the perfect trip you're going to attract a great new friend as well one last thing we have our new stitcher radio application for our radio broadcast This new app is for the entire radio broadcast that features all of our incredible shows, such as Constance Arnold and Lee Harris and G.P. Walsh, and the list goes on and on. All of these shows are airing through your smartphone or on your Internet car dashboard. Go to LOARadioNetwork.com, put in the code LOA, and you're automatically entered to win $100 worth of goodies. Now, let's talk with our returning guest, Dr. Bruce Lipton. And if you happen to be on a computer listening or on your smartphone, go check out Dr. Bruce's site at brucelipton.com, where he has invaluable information that will rock your world. For those of you who are new, 
Let me tell you that Bruce H. Lipton, Ph.D., is an internationally recognized leader in bridging science and spirit. Stem cell biologist, best-selling author of The Biology of Belief, and recipient of the 2009 Goy Peace Award. Bruce is a cellular biologist, a former medical school professor, and produced breakthrough studies on cell membranes and how to activate genes. His discoveries, which ran counter to the established scientific community, led to today's most important fields of study, the science of epigenetics. And I've got to tell you, Bruce Lipton has impacted my life so dramatically. Not only is he my all-time favorite guest, I use his principles constantly in my hypnotherapy practice. I am so thrilled to have Dr. Bruce Lipton back. Hi, Bruce. Welcome. I am am so delighted, Jules. I have to tell you because... Um, this is a great time and an opportunity as we're facing this profound future in front of us to recognize how truly powerful we are and how we absolutely influence and uh, participate in the creation of our own lives because this is a time that says that we must get our power back. So, uh, And the information coming from science is so supportive of that. That's why I'm excited to have an opportunity to speak with you about it and, of course, to all the wonderful listeners out there uh, because um, we are all, by definition, uh, cultural creatives. Each one of us is looking for answers outside of the box, and by definition, that's uh, what we become, and we are, are, are people of the future evolution. So, hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's one of the best <laughs> first sentences I've ever had on the show. <laughs> now, Bruce, I love your new website, and especially the intro clip, uh, which talks about stem cells that prove that we are not victims of life, but the creators of life, just like you said. Can you tell the listeners a little bit of that video uh, that they get when they get to your site? Yeah, uh, basically it's an introduction of what I uh, refer to as the new biology, and basically, it's based on uh, research uh, that's relatively current, so current, in fact, that it's really not in the, in the, in the public domain yet. Uh, it's just coming out to the public, in fact. Uh, and it's based uh, uh, on a new science called epigenetics. Uh, and most of all of us were programmed the belief of genetics, and that means genes controlling our life. And that's why they say genetic control, which literally says control by genes, uh, and then we see our life as, uh, well, my goodness, I didn't pick the genes as far as I know. I can't change them if I don't like any of the traits that I particularly have. Uh, and I realized, my goodness, I'm not, my life is being controlled by these genes. And, and I'm sort of pre-programmed. <laughs> if there's like cancer running in a family, I can expect that this will be part of my future. So what we acquired with this awareness, which was based on genetics, is that we are victims. Uh, uh, of our DNA, uh, victims of our heredity. That, uh, you know, as I said, if there's a disease running in your family, that now we think, oh, you, you have genes for that. Uh, and, and when we find ourselves as victims, it's so disempowering, of course, because by the nature of victim, but it also leads to uh, irresponsibility. Uh, simply, well, if I'm going to get this and I can't do anything about it, why do I care? Uh, let's just go on. <laughs> uh, and so we, we lose personal responsibility in, in our lives. And then, and here's the, the critical part financially, and that is this. When we believe we are victims and are powerless, then by definition we will seek other people who can take care of us. Uh, and we will pay them a lot of money. <laughs> and that's called the pharmaceutical industry who says, look, you're a machine, and we make the chemicals to fix the machine, and you have to buy our things. And it's sort of like, oh, my God, uh, we bought into it. Well, that was a long introduction to the fact that there's a new biology, and it's <laughs> called epigenetics. And, and it's like it almost sounds the same except for that EPI in the front, the little EPI. And I said that little prefix, epi, is a revolution in, in biology and civilization. Because, uh, as I said, the former belief was genetic control, controlled by genes. The new science is epigenetic control, and epi it means above. So, when, you know, if I want to say the word for skin in the science term, uh, skin is called epidermis. 
uh, dermis is the layer below the skin, and so the skin is called epidermis, layer above the skin, above the dermis, okay? Epi above. So when I say epigenetic control, then I'm literally saying control above the genes. And finally, the science that I saw over, well, I, I, was, I was working in this field before it was a field. I, 45 years ago, I was cloning stem cells, and the results of my studies revealed exactly this understanding, and that is this. Genes do not control biology. It is the interaction of the organism with the environment that controls the activity of the genes. And why that becomes important is if genes control our biology, the current belief, that means by definition we are victims because I, I can't do anything. Those are my genes. But if we start to recognize that uh, our biology is controlled by how we respond to the world and the environment that in which we live, uh, then all of a sudden, well, wait a minute, I'm the one that can change how I respond to the world and change my environment and change my perception. And why that becomes important is all of a sudden it's like, well, if those elements control genetics and we can control those elements, and by definition, we control our genes. And this is what the whole story comes down to is, is our belief, our responses to the environment, our perceptions and emotions that are sending chemical signals to the cell that uh uh, cause genes to be activated and to be altered. Uh, and the last part is really really the blow away part if we talk about it because I said to be activated meaning the way we see life and respond to life activates certain genes. That's part one. But part two is not only does it activate a gene which is a blueprint to make uh, body parts um, but it can modify the readout of a gene meaning this by the way I respond to the environment I can affect my genes by causing the production of up to 30,000 different building blocks from the same gene blueprint. And all of a sudden it says, what does that mean? It says, we are in total control of manipulating not just the genes that are on and off, but how they're expressed. And, and, and then you say, wow, that's really great. And I go, and if you don't have awareness of that knowledge, guess what? That control can also be misused to create the health problems that we have on this world today. And that's what this current new science reveals. It's not, we've been blaming our biology and our genetics and our machinery for our ails. You know, we go, oh yeah, I've got cancer, I've got diabetes, I've got heart problems. Like, oh, it's like, and we say, oh, the machine broke, like a car, like a vehicle, the, the, it's broken down. And um, the significance is, in our story of conventional biology, uh, and the one that we all believe in, because that's the one we are programmed with, is that our vehicle, our body, our equivalent of a car, is self-programmed by like a, a genetic computer, and that's what makes it run, okay? Uh, the new story says, yes, it is a, um, a vehicle, a body, it's like a vehicle, it's a mechanism and all that, but there's something that they left out of the former uh, understanding, and that is there's a driver in the vehicle, and that's our consciousness. And the significance about that is just simply, this is like the beautiful character of the analogy is with cars and bodies. And it's like you go to a junkyard, you see all these cars stacked up all over the place, and they're all broken and dead. Uh, and then you ask a question, what is the reason these vehicles are in here? And it breaks down to either two, either two things, either the driver error, you know, driver not driving it correctly and they're causing accidents or whatever, or vehicle failure. Okay, well, you go through that junkyard and you list them as which one was caused. Why is this car here? Driver error or vehicle failure? It comes out it's over ninety percent is is driver error. Uh -huh. and, and why is that important? Because I go to the to the uh, health field, the health industry. I look in the yard and see how many patients are out there, and then I ask the same question: Is this due to uh, vehicle failure or driver error? And it turns out ninety percent. Uh, of uh, our, our, our illnesses and issues that we face in health are due to uh, lifestyle and stress. And all of a sudden, that, why is that important? It says, well, for God's sakes, all of us have been, you know, saying the, the, the body let me down. My vehicle broke. And my vehicle has a problem. And we never recognized it was the way we were driving the vehicle. Absolutely. Uh,
and, and it becomes, you know, it's like I get two vehicles come out of the manufacturing uh, 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 yard, uh, and one goes to like a hothead teenager, and the other one goes to, uh, you know, a mature older person, and I say, okay, both of them buy the same car. And I say, well, what do you think the fate of these cars are going to be? And the answer is, the, the teenager's car is going to end up in a junkyard a lot faster. Uh, and the reason is this: not because the car, the cars were any different. It was the way you drive the vehicle. And you're saying our mind is the driver. Uh, yeah. And we used to think that our, our mind was like a backseat driver because we sit in the back seat and go, geez, turn left, turn left. And then all of a sudden we go right and it's like, well, what the heck happened there, you know? Uh, and, and therefore that's what we almost feel all the time is like, oh, you know, uh, I'm not really always driving this vehicle. Sometimes it does its own thing, you know? Uh, and, and basically, uh, that's because, uh, we are driving the vehicle, but we're unaware that, uh, there are two elements that are driving the vehicle, uh, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, and they have different driving instructions. <laughs> so. Yeah, definitely. So you're saying that we have control over our health. Absolutely. Are you saying it's an intelligent energy outside of our cells or within the cells that create the reality? So where is this? Is, is it consciousness? Is it... A higher source of energy. What, what give us the spiritual? Um, okay, uh, first uh, let, let's go to the physics of it because it's very interesting. Because uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to come at you now from the point of a scientist. Okay, Great. I got into science and uh, and and that was an alternative to the field of spirituality, in the sense that when I was a kid, spiritual people gave me words of wisdom. And as a kid, I could even see that you have nice words, but your life doesn't match anything about what the heck you're talking about. So, <laughs> isn't that the truth? <laughs> so, uh, and then you know, so a young kid, you, you you know, you can see right through all that stuff. And and yet, what yeah. appealed to me as a young kid was science, and and that uh, a truth in science is valid on this side of the planet, it's valid on the other side of the planet. You know, that's that's the truth. Okay. So I said, I'm going to go into that. So I no concept of spirituality. Get into understanding the cells and my early work on on that uh, stem cells, which I was, as I said, I was cloning stem cells in 1967. Uh, uh, it was like 45 years ago. Just a handful of us in the entire world had any any, any idea what stem cells were. Uh, but the work was so profound that it changed my entire life, and it also caused me to be at odds with everybody in my ki- scientific community because uh, I started to recognize environmental control, and they were still talking genetic control. So... Uh, all of this stuff was going on, and I'm still into this uh, science mode, and I'm trying to understand how this new uh, environmental pathway, how the signal from the environment control the genes, and I'm studying uh, what I find to be the brain of the cell, which is actually the skin or membrane, membrane, I love that, uh, of the cell, uh, uh, and which is just like humans because our nervous system also comes from our skin. Cells and people are, are, are... images of each other, in fact, the relevance really got down to this one point. And it said, wait a minute, if I take my cells out of my body and put it in somebody else's body, their immune system says not self and rejects the cells. If you take cells out of your body and put them in somebody else's body, the same thing will happen. Your cells will be rejected. The point is cells have an identity. Obviously, if my cells go in your body and your cells say, this isn't, these aren't us, then they know that there's somebody else. And right. so the question was, where is the identity of a cell coming from? And the answer was, uh, in my understanding of the cell membrane, it's like a, a computer chip, and on the surface there are keys called receptors. So when you type on the key, the receptor picks up an environmental signal and then translates it into biology. So the surface of the cell is like this keyboard with 100,000 different receptors, like little molecular keys. And as the cell moves through the environment, information pushes on the keys, and then the cell responds to that information. So this is cool. And then I realized, wait, what makes two people different? And the answer is this. On the outer surface of our cells are a set of antennas called protein receptors, uh, which is like a combination lock. It's a large number of these receptors, and they're variations of each one. So, uh, you know, like uh, just like a combination lock where you have to put in the digits one at a time all the way across. Um, and each one of us has a different set. And, and what was significant about that is that like, um, um, when we want to transplant a heart or lungs or an organ into somebody else, 
you don't just take anybody's heart and lungs. You have to look at these antennas on the surface of the cell and match as many of the combinations as you can. And there's a certain minimum, and then the, you know, then the, if they match, uh, tissue match, then you can use that to, you know, organ and, and, and transplant it. And so basically, uh, and it's interesting because medicine refers to these receptors. Here's the, they're called receptors, receivers, uh, and they re, they call these receptors self receptors, which is in fact what they are. Each one of us has a set of antennas that is a unique combination on our surface of our cells that are different than anybody else's. If you take the antennas off, the cells are generic; they have no identity. So uh, it says, okay, uh, how do we differ, you and I, Jules, besides you being beautiful and me being talky, you know, talky guy right here? Uh, here here's, how, here's how it's different. Your set of antennas and my set of antennas don't, don't have the same combination. The antennas, we used to say the, the antennas were the physical difference between people. I go, yeah, but you're mistaking the point. It's not the antennas, it's the signals that are received by the antennas that make the difference. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you say, well, wait, where are the antennas? They're on the outside surface of the cell. So where do you think the signals come from that, I, that activate the T's called self in your body uh, and, and in my body? And every listener out there, we all have our own set of these keys. I said, where do the signals come from that activate them? The answer is the environment. Uh, and, and this blew my mind because at that very instant I recognized my identity is information from the environment being picked up by an antenna. And, 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 and then uh, my body responds. So like I'm a drop-in driver of the vehicle, I'm driving it via the antenna. And, 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 uh, and here's the fun part, because at the first, the first instant of recognizing, oh, my God, my identity is a broadcast from the environment picked up by the antennas. And I said, oh, I'm immortal. I'm immortal for a very simple reason. Uh, consider the, the body like a television set with an antenna, and it's tuned to yours is tuned to the Jewel station. I'm playing the Bruce station right now, and, and we're talking, and, uh, and you're watching the television set, and the picture tube goes out, and, and we say, oh, the television's dead. And I go, yeah, the television's dead. Did the broadcast stop? And you say, oh, no, no. You got another TV, plug it in, turn it on, and tune it to the station, and the broadcast is back on. And all of a sudden you realize, wait a minute. There's a broadcast and there's a receiver. And I realize the body is the receiver. Relevance, the body, like the television, can come and go, but the broadcast is always there. And that always there part is, oh, my God, our identity stays on. It's only the bodies that come and go. And, 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 and here's So the, you're talking about reincarnation. Exactly. If a, another embryo shows up with the same antennas that you have today, then you'd be back on the air. But here's the fun part. Uh, the television is not you. The television, look, I, I, there's a television broadcast wherever you are right now, and I can say I can watch it on 20 different television sets, you know, if I tune them to the right station. Each television is different. The point is, when we come back into the body, is it a male body or female body? Oh, that's not part of the self-receptor. That's part of the machinery. Is it a white or black or yellow body? That's not part of the, of the identity. It's part of the physical vehicle. All of a sudden you realize, oh my goodness, we step into bodies. We, we keep the same spirit, but bodies are, are just like these television sets that come and go. And, and, and so you don't know what to, which kind of human you're going to come back as and what your role is going to be at this time. But then, wow. but here comes, the, okay, so now I'm sitting there like, now I'm stunned because like I'm not spiritual. Uh, and this was about 1985, so I was like 40-some uh, years old, you know, going up there. And and, uh, uh, and I was sitting there, and all of a sudden the concept of spirituality, which I didn't believe in, right? I looked at it and said, oh, my God, my identity is an energy field picked up from the environment. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's spiritual. And it was so astonishingly simple and clear that it wasn't like, oh, I wonder if there is such a thing. It's, I wonder if that's really real. It was, to me, it was two plus two is four. Understand the nature of the receptors. You understand the nature of spirituality. Uh, and so it was like up to one minute, 40-some years, non-spiritual, and then one minute later, it's like, okay, fully spiritual, got it. <laughs> <laughs> 
of course, I had to do a lot of learning that <laughs> comes after that. The you know uh, uh, the new you know driver's manual. I had to re, re you know review the whole manual and do it again. But here's a fun fact though, because uh, uh, I remember how I, this just blew my mind because I I had to deal with the fact now is wait. I now recognize that there is a spiritual entity called Bruce, and there is at this moment a physical body called Bruce, and uh, and then uh, I asked this question to myself, thinking, why have a body? What, I mean, you know, why not just be spiritual? What, what, you know, why have a body? Yeah. And I asked this question, and I tell you, the most amazing thing happened. I could feel the answer welling up from 50 trillion cells inside of my body. I asked the question. Why have both a spirit and a body? And this answer came back in the form of a question. Maybe I have Jewish self. Uh, it came back. I asked, why have a spirit and a body? And the cells responded with, Bruce, if you're just a spirit, what does chocolate taste like? Oh. And all of a sudden I said, oh, my God. The, 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 the spirit has information and awareness, Right. But the body is a machine, a mechanism. It converts the physical world we live in to sensation. I can see, I can smell, I can touch, I can feel, I can, I can be in love. I can, I can have all these experiences in my body. But the fact is, it's the body that is, is converting the environmental signals into an electromagnetic field, which is broadcast from my brain. And so basically, uh, the, the body is like a virtual reality suit. You step into it, and guess what? You can sense and experience the world. And more importantly, you can also use your body, if you understand the, you are the driver of this body, to be totally creative in this world. You can create whatever you want. And, and, and then the whole thing really turned down to it, and I thought, oh, my God. The biggest joke in the entire world is that most people are of the belief that when you die, then you go to heaven, and I realized, no, 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 <laughs> no, when you're born, then you're in heaven. <laughs> wow. Because why? Because we can leave our bodies, we can die, we can have all this memory and awareness, and I can say, yes, in one of my lifetimes I did this, I have a memory and awareness of it, uh, and then somebody said, did you taste this new uh, chocolate mint flavored ice cream? And I go, no. And it's like, well, I'll never be able to taste it, I'm a spirit. <laughs> How am I going to taste it? The only way you can taste it is you've got to be in the body. All of a sudden you realize, oh, man, the body enhances the experience of the spirit. Oh, so you want to come back in to experience heaven. Boy, that is so wonderful. I love it. So a question then I have is our brain, our mind, and our thoughts control our health. But then our mind is part of that universal source. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, uh, we're part of the whole. In other words, uh, and I use this in my lecture uh, as one of the closing slides. Uh, there's a, an album from Pink Floyd called Dark Side of the Moon that many people might remember from the old days. And it has a, a prism uh, on the front with a white light coming in one side of the prism and then breaking up into the spectrum of the rainbow on the other side. And I, I show people this, I said, this is a process called refraction. White light comes in, and because of the glass and the atoms, the, the light is split up into the spectrum of the rainbow on the other side coming out. And then I ask, and what happens if you take the rainbow spectrum and push it through the prism? What comes out the other side? The answer is it comes back as white light. And, and then I go, okay, now think about it this way. Each one of us, has a set of antennas that receive a very specific frequency. Vibration, that's what it's, it's our, our self-receptors read, read vibration. And, and therefore, and light is a form of vibration. So I say, look, consider each one of us as an individual color, you know, like you can split reds up into thousands of different shades of reds and things like that, and thousands and thousands of variations. And, and I go, uh, think of each one of us as, as a color out of the spectrum. And then I say, we have on this planet been told by spiritual people for years that the white light is coming to the planet. <laughs> and, yeah. and we think about the white light as, oh, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, you know, some right. spiritual entity like that is a single entity. I, I see it in the study and course of evolution in biology, which is part of my other work, is that 
each one of us is a vibrational frequency of the white light. When we start to recognize that all humans are part of one super organism called humanity, that's what's evolving. The human's not evolving. Humanity, the community of humans is evolving. Just like a human body looks like a single entity, and the fact is, no, it's a community of 50 trillion cells. The cells are the living entity. Well, now humans are like cells, and we are coming together, and this is part of the upheaval that the planet is experiencing right now, uh, because we've been separated. And, 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 and each, you know, uh, faction, country, nation, religious group, and others separating from each other all the time, when the reality of the evolution is that first we recognize we're all cells in the body of one organism called humanity. And when we stop killing each other, that would be the end of what would be the equivalent. Humanity has experienced what I would call right now autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease is, by definition, a uh, disease of self-destruction, where the body yes. cells destroy themselves. Well, we are on a planet of an evolving organism called humanity, but the cells of the organism are still fighting each other, yeah. and, and it's killing the planet uh, and our ability, you know, our ability to be supported by this planet because we're interfering with nature too much without knowing who we are. Exactly. It's like cancer is pervading yeah. everything right now. And so how do we, what, what uh, is there a, a treatment for this? Oh, a- absolutely. It's called knowledge. Knowledge is power. Oh. And and we, you know, nobody, everyone says, oh, yeah, knowledge is power, and they emphasize that. And I go, no, emphasize it this way. A lack of knowledge is a lack of power. The oh. lack of knowledge that we have been living under has so disempowered us that we believe we are victims of a world that we're actually creators of. That's where the problem goes wrong. We're victims. We bought the victim story. And since it's, the biology is, belief, is based on belief and perception, if you perceive or believe yourself to be a victim, then biology, by definition, remember, this is a place of creativity. If that's what you believe in, you will create that. <laughs> and, and, and this is what we have to... You know, it, here's a, a funny uh, you know, little sidebar thought about that. Um, most people have seen the movie called The Matrix. Right. And, and it's listed as science fiction. I, I want to change that. I want to say The Matrix is more a documentary than a science mm-hmm. fiction story. Uh, what was it? Take the red pill. Why? Because you get out of the programming. And when you're out of the programming, then you become the creator rather than the one being programmed. And, and the fact is, as Biology of Belief and Spontaneous Evolution emphasize the books that I wrote, um, we've all been programmed in the yes, first seven have. years of our lives. Uh, and it's interesting because, well, there's a science that's new that explains the nature of the programming. Uh, I always hark back to this, like, you got to think about it because of the perverse humor of it. The Jesuits would boast. They would say, give me a child until it's six or seven and it will belong to the church for the rest of its life. Or they'd say something more biblical like, uh, give me the child and I will show you the man. What they were referring to was that they knew if I can program your first six or seven years of your life, I own your life. Yeah. (laughs) And and they knew that. And then I try to get people to understand, well, you think of little insignificant fact like that might have slipped by and got lost after the last 500 years. I go, you kidding me? It's been emphasized greater and greater by those that know how to run the planet. Exactly. And and let's bring it down to today. I mean, in a couple of weeks we have a... Uh, an election going on, and the media is is controlling people by the fear. But in reality, they're taking their. We are making ourselves victims if we believe everything that is being projected out. So, in fact, is it really? I mean, we are the creators. Yes. So we can create a world no matter what kind of government is in place. Absolutely. Is, is, we have okay, to. Okay, that's the. We button. have to. And for the reason is this, the evolution that's in front of us, okay, uh, is being precipitated by all the crises that we face right now. And you can start making a list. We have an economic crisis, a fuel crisis, a food crisis that's looming right now, a health care crisis, a political crisis, and they go on and on and on. And, and, uh, and it's like, well, we can list them, but guess what? All of them reflect one thing. And that is, the way we are living on our planet is not sustainable. 
we can't live this way. It doesn't it doesn't work. Oh, and the, and we're getting the symptoms of the feedback saying, look what the way you're living is causing all this. <laughs> and so we know that they're all really human behavior induced problems, and we have to deal with it. And and then we hark back again now history to Albert Einstein, who came up with this great uh, concept, uh, the, this wisdom that we've heard it before, but it's like, no, listen to it. This is where it applies. He says. We cannot solve the problems with the same thinking that created the problems. Yeah. And, uh. and then you look around and you say, yeah, but look what's falling apart. Education's falling apart. Government's falling apart. Healthcare's falling apart. Religion's falling apart. And you go, wow, everybody's getting afraid of that. And I'm going, this is where you have to get organized here about this. And the reason is this. Those institutions have been teaching the beliefs that have led us to the crises. The only way out of this crisis is that all these things have to topple because their belief systems, the foundation of our culture, has created the world that is now, you know, scientists have recognized this is a fact. We, we are in the sixth mass extinction of life on this planet. We're not just in it. We are actually precipitating it. And so we're creating our own extinction. And that's a fact of science, which, you know, in the presidential debate, nobody wants to talk about that. <laughs> Just ignore the fact that, yes, the planet uh, is revealed, like, within 30 years, there won't be fish in the ocean. It's like, okay, that's like science fiction. It's like, no, man, that's, your kids will not see fish in the ocean. That's what it's going to be. And, and, and it's because of the way we're living. So what does it mean? As Einstein said, we can't continue with the same beliefs. They're the ones that cause the problem. That means every institution that has these concrete beliefs that have gotten us to this point, they must fall and be rebuilt with new belief. So with new beliefs. New so beliefs. how do we do this? Do we start acknowledging our power right now and start visualizing what we want to see in the future? Well, we could start that, but first we have to understand why we are so disempowered when we are so powerful. Mm -hmm. Because without that, our efforts are just against the wall. We keep hitting the wall because we're going to hit the same failures that we hit every day now uh, uh, because the failures that we experience are programs that were put into us before 7. And, and therefore, uh, we have to become aware of who we are and how we work because if we don't understand that, uh, the, it, it's self-defeating. It's self-defeating because... Uh, the underlying part, if I, let's see how we can summarize this in 30 seconds. This is going to be tough to all, but <laughs> there, there, there are two parts to the mind, the conscious mind, and let's just say specifically about that, the conscious mind is creative. Uh -huh. That's the one that has your wishes and your desires and what you want from life. It's also the one connected to your spirit and your identity, okay? Uh -huh. So if I say you, the person thinking you inside of you with wishes and desires, that's coming from the conscious plat mind platform, okay? And I said, what about the subconscious mind? I said, that is like a, a jukebox with recorded programs in it. Yeah. Push the button, play the program. Push it a thousand times, play the program a thousand times. Push it a million times, play it a million times. It's just a record playback device. Okay? Well, the issue is this, that the fundamental programs in our subconscious mind, as the Jesuits knew, were put in there uh, through the first seven years of our lives because our, our brain was operating at a vibrational frequency of theta predominantly, which is hypnosis. Right. And that means for the first seven years of our life, whatever we saw and experienced just got directly downloaded in the subconscious. So when we observed how people responded on the planet, we modeled after our parents and our family and our community. We observed them. And then put the program of how they did it into our mind, and then unconsciously, if we want to do the same thing, we'll play it just the way they did it. Right. So... Uh, and, and people are, are, are get upset <laughs> and they laugh though when I tell them the story because I say here's a story with two very profound points and I go I'm sure back in your history you were very close to a friend of yours you knew your friend's behavior very well and you happen to know your friend's parent and at one time you probably saw that your friend and their parent shared some same behavior and then you casually volunteered something like um, hey you know Bill you're just like your dad <laughs> And you know that uh, Bill goes uh, ballistic yeah. and says, how can you compare me to my dad? And then I say, two profound points, same story. Profound point number one, everyone else can see that Bill behaves like his dad. It's only Bill who doesn't see it. Okay? Uh -huh. And profound point number two, 
we are all Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Even if we don't see it. It doesn't make a difference you don't see it. You, Bill didn't see it either. We are playing programs from our foundational seven years that are acquired by observing other people. So when we play those programs, we're not playing our wishes and desires. We're playing their behavior. And 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 the problem is, uh, how much of our life is controlled by our conscious mind, wishes, desires, aspirations, and how much of our life is controlled by the subconscious mind, primarily programmed by others. And the answer turns out to be this amazingly lopsided number. We only create from our conscious mind about five percent of our life. Oh my goodness! Ninety-five percent of our cognitive behavior is managed and controlled by the subconscious program. And you say, well, how can that be? And the answer is this, because the subconscious mind is time-bound. It's always in the present moment. If, if you could ask your subconscious mind, if you could have a, a conversation with you, say, when did I learn how to walk? The subconscious mind would say, today. <laughs> Everything's today. It doesn't know any different from yesterday, today, tomorrow. It's all today. <laughs> and I say, and, the, and what about the conscious mind? I go, oh, that's the interesting one. That's the one that can travel. Think about the future. Review the past. Have a daydream. Just disconnect from the world around you and go up in your head. And I'm saying, so where's the conscious mind? Well, it's traveling. I say, yeah, but then who's running the show? The default is the subconscious. So now it turns out the fact is simple. Only 5% of the time are we paying attention to the present moment. 95% of our time in mind is wandering. And therefore, 95% of the time, we default to the subconscious. Yeah, but the subconscious plays behaviors that are not necessarily yours or contain any of your wishes and desires. And the answer is, yeah, that's the problem. That's <laughs> the problem, yeah. And, and, and until you recognize that, you feel you're a victim. Because like Bill, if you don't see your own behavior that could be sabotaging you and you're trying to get something and you're not getting it, and you're saying, yeah, but my conscious mind is intending to get it, and I'm trying, and I'm not getting it, then the inevitable conclusion to that thought is, well, uh, I'm a victim of fate, or, you know, cards are not in my hand, or, you know, the uh, universe is not kind toward me. Mm. I'm a victim, right. because I really wanted to be successful, and I'm not, so it's got to be something else. And the fact was, yeah, that something else is 95% of your life that is running by the invisible programming in the subconscious mind that is sabotaging you like Bill, and none of us see it. And therefore, we own victim when in truth are, we're total masters <laughs> because we're the ones that can reprogram that subconscious mind. Okay, Bruce, this is where you have made such a huge impact on my life because I'm a practicing hypnotherapist, and it's because of you and the biology of belief that I talk in every session to the client while under hypnosis, I talk about their 50 trillion cells that has the antenna who listens to the commander in chief. And each client, I have them feel sending, feel and send loving thoughts of appreciation and gratitude to their cells while under hypnosis. So if this is what you are saying that we are only using 5% of our creative under hypnosis then, can we jumpstart it to be 10% or 20% where absolutely. we're living in creativity? Jules, that's absolutely what the whole idea is all about. Since we're operating from uh, 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 habitual behaviors programmed in the subconscious mind, since we recognize that fundamentally the programs that we operate from are really acquired from other people and we live their lives, what would be the consequence of putting your own programs in there that you wanted? And the answer is, oh, well, then when you're not paying attention, you'll still be doing or moving in the direction you wanted to go because that would be the default program rather than switching off to your parents or wherever else the, the program came from. And, 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 you know, what's so, so exciting to all about this is that we're talking about this and creating this, you know, world and that you are powerful and, and you create stuff. And this is the subject of, of my new book that's coming out this spring called The Honeymoon Effect, mm -hmm. which is the subtitle of Science of Creating Heaven on Earth. Uh, and as we talked about before the show, um, I asked people to go back to a time in their life they fell head over heels in love with somebody. And I asked three questions. I say, were you healthy? And almost everybody, almost everybody says exuberantly healthy. And I say, did you have energy? And as we talked about and joked over, yeah, you probably made love for days without stopping for food or sleep. <laughs> uh, and, and then lastly, I asked, was life so beautiful that 
you couldn't wait for the next day to have more. It was essentially, think about it for a moment, no matter how long it lasted, a week, a month, a year, that period, which I call the honeymoon period, think about it, is that you created heaven on earth because that was not an accident. That was a personal creation. It was not a coincidence that you were actually involved. And then you go, wait a minute. I go, well, here's the fun part. I'm talking about the fact that we can create heaven on earth, and then I'm also telling you now, you already did it. <laughs> you already did it. And, and then you say, well, how did I do that, and how come it didn't last, and how come it fell apart, and how come my life is the way it is today if I was able to do that? And I go, and the reason, this is how, there's a science behind it. When you fall in love like that, it's the one time in your life where you stay fully present with a conscious mind. And the reason is so simple. When you fall in love, everything you wanted was right in front of your face. Why would you let your mind wander then? So guess what? The one time you, and then consider this, your partner who you just met up with, are both operating from your conscious minds, not relying on 5% from the conscious mind, but 90% from the conscious mind. Why is that relevant? Well, the conscious mind has your wishes and your desires and what you want. That means when two people are in the honeymoon effect, they are manifesting their life experiences directly from wishes and desires. And then you say, well, what happened to the honeymoon? I go, well, it fades away. I go, what you, why does it fade away? And I go, because life starts to get busy. I mean, yes, you're still in love, but you got a job. you got to pay the rent. You have to fix the car. Uh, your life gets busy. Relevance, when your life gets busy, your mind starts to wander. When your conscious mind starts to wander, you kick in by default the programs in the subconscious mind. Yeah, but now think about it. You just created a honeymoon with your wishes and your desires and aspirations in conjunction with your partner. Both, yes, we're both doing that. And then the honeymoon starts to end. For what reason? Because we bring in behaviors that were programmed in the subconscious and programmed by other people that have never played in the honeymoon period because we were always being conscious. When we shift into the default because our mind starts to travel and think, we start automatically playing those programs, which we just talked about with Bill. We didn't even see we did it. <laughs> we just did it. And, and, but our partner sees that something is different. And it's like, where'd that behavior come from? Or who are you after, you know, some outburst or something like that? And, and if I was the one that made that outburst because my mind was wandering and I would played a program from the subconscious, which was who? Probably my father. And spoke to my partner in the manner my father spoke to my mother. Uh, of course, that would shock, shock my partner. And then she would say to me, who are you, Bruce? And I would go, what are you talking about? She said, well, that behavior. And I go, I don't know what you're talking about. And the fact is, I actually don't know why. Because it was my automatic behavior, because my mind wasn't paying attention, and my subconscious played the program, and now I'm defending myself about, Wow. I, what do you mean? I've always been this person here, Bruce. I don't know what you're talking about. Where where'd you see that? And it's like, just like Bill, didn't see the behavior at all. And then the honeymoon ends for a very simple reason. You start compromising, accepting behaviors newly introduced in the relationship that were never part of the honeymoon and are not necessarily good. And all of a sudden you start to, well, okay, I don't really like that part, but he, he's a good guy. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll stick us out. Yeah, I just don't like that part. And then another bad part comes out, and then there's a more compromise. And then maybe all of a sudden some abusive part comes out that wasn't even there before, and all of a sudden now you realize, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> and, and the honeymoon is surely gone, uh, and and yet the two people involved have no understanding of, A, they actually created a honeymoon together because that's what they wanted in their wishes and desires, and B, that they, they lost that because they automatically slipped into the programming and started playing subconscious behaviors. And then as you brought up, Jules, which is the whole solution, the answer uh, uh, is that what do we do about it? And the, and the answer is simple. What if you rewrote the programs in your subconscious mind so they match the wishes and desires and aspirations of the conscious mind? The answer is if you did that, then you would be on a honeymoon forever for a simple reason. Even if your mind traveled, you'd still be playing the same program that got you into the honeymoon in the first place. So it's like, mm -hmm. ah, heaven on earth. And if everybody did that, then this whole planet would just turn around overnight and be heaven on earth. And, and it's just letting go of the beliefs that are holding us back right now, letting go of the program, take the red pill from the matrix, and let the programming go and create heaven. 
Wow, I've got to get your book. <laughs> I am so excited about it. It's May 2013, right? Yes. It's coming out. Yes. The Honeymoon Effect, The Science of Creating Heaven on Earth. Oh, my goodness. It's so much fun oh. because it's a mechanism, and, and it's been invisible. And all of a sudden it says, mm -hmm. yeah, but that's why it's like, okay, we have great intentions. All of us are going to go today, great intentions, move forward, evolve the planet. I go, well, this is really good. But does your subconscious programming support that intention or not? Because if it doesn't, then you're not actually going to succeed in that intention at all. Wow, beautiful. We've got a couple minutes left, but I've got two very important questions to ask you. So I, I want to start first with stem cells. Are we seeing the restrictions around this being lifted that we can expect stem cells to be used on a normal basis in Western medicine? Well, here, here's the point. We're, we're looking again at stem cells like a pharmaceutical company giving you a pill, but now it's a live pill called a stem cell. True, okay? true. Here, here's this point. We all have stem cells. <laughs> if you didn't, you wouldn't be alive for a simple reason. Every day you lose hundreds and hundreds of billions of cells through normal aging and damage and trauma. Uh, cells die and they're replaced every day. It's like your, the entire lining of your digestive tract from your mouth down to your anus is replaced every three days. And it's like, where do you get the trillion cells to do that? And the answer is stem cells. Stem cells are the equivalent of embryonic cells. They're in our body. Then you say, well, how come it repairs all the rest of my body, but it doesn't repair this particular problem I'm working with over here? Uh, and the issue is, well, you are the, the, the contractor. Your mind is creating a body based on your belief system. And, 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 and the issue about that is, then there, whatever you're having a trouble saying, I'm not repairing this or organ and, and therefore I need stem cells. I say, no, you have stem cells. What you have to do is recognize why is that organ not repairing itself? And it's almost inevitable because there's an underlying belief that challenges that. It's sort of like Louise Hay's book, uh, You Can Heal Your Life. Right. Uh, she has uh, in the glossary different emotions and, uh, and attitudes or beliefs that lead to very specific uh, parts of the body being affected in different ways. So you can look that up like a little glossary and say what part of the body is being affected and see that there's, there's a connection, in a, uh, an emotional and a subconscious belief about that right. that is interfering with it. So what I'm saying is this, why should I go out and buy stem cells when I already have stem cells? And the answer is, yeah, but your stem cells uh, are not working in that area. But they must be working everywhere else for the simple reason you're still here. <laughs> so are you are you saying that you can reprogram your existing stem cells, perhaps through hypnosis, to activate to a certain area? Absolutely. Okay. You have to first find, there's a program, it's not just, oh, there's a, a mechanistic defect that the stem cell doesn't know how to make this piece. That would be a conventional allopathic approach. Oh, the body is, you remember, the body is self-regulating, self-controlling. If it's not working, there's something wrong with it. Leaving the driver out. The driver is this. Look, your stem cells will replace everything else in your body. If there's an issue uh, uh, affecting an organ or a tissue or something, uh, it's not, don't blame it on the machinery. What is it in the programming of the vehicle that says that this is not a benefit for you to do this? It's the emotion of the driver. There you go. <laughs> and that's, that's built into the system, and that's why all of this is so exciting, because this new biology, new power, because it's new knowledge, wow. is what will make the evolution in front of us happen when people start to recognize, I am not a victim. I do not need to, to give up. Uh, you know, like 60% of bankruptcies in the United States are, today are due to medical bills. Wow. 60% uh, of people whose whole life fortune has been lost to medicine uh, have lost their, their life because uh, of the victimization of the process. Mm. Mm. And, and, and we talk about the placebo effect. Everybody gets it. And I say, well, what is the placebo effect? Everything we just talked about, Jules. Yeah. Placebo effect is my belief that this thing is going to heal me. Even if I find out later that thing was a sugar pill, had no use at all. It was my belief that healed me. And everyone's familiar with that. And we go, yeah, the placebo effect. Nobody wants to talk about it. Just like I talked about knowledge is power, the, al the alternate a lack of knowledge, the lack of power is really profoundly more important. Uh, the, the placebo effect is the consequence of a positive belief that I can heal myself uh, or that whatever it is is going to heal me. And I say, well, what about a negative belief? And it turns out, oh, that's called the nocebo effect. 
it's equally powerful to the placebo effect, but works in the opposite direction. As much as a positive thought can heal you from a terminal disease, you know, spontaneous remission, a, a thought can cause that terminal disease. It's the same thing. It, 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 one positive thought moves you toward health, and the negative thought takes you away from health. Wow. Okay, so let's go a step further here with uh, energy healing. Now, in the last couple of months, uh, the show is really focused in on distant healing. We've had magnificent energy healers come on the show and actually do long-distance healing. Now, tell me, scientifically, can people in another area transmit energy into your body, scientifically, true or not? Uh, true, uh, and but not exactly that way. They can transmit information into your identity. Remember, you're the, you're the field. You're, you're you who you are, your spirit, right? right? There's a broadcast in the field. Where is that? Well, it's everywhere. <laughs> so am I disconnected from somebody else on the other side of the world? The answer is no. We're all in the same field at any one time. If I want to influence, uh, to be some influence, I have to deal with, let's say, uh, healing person A. Person A has to be receptive and, and I have to be able to interact with the field. Change their field. I don't need to change their body because if you change the field, the body will be, uh, will, will just follow right along with the field. Uh, a simple way of looking at it this way. Um, you, you take iron filings, which you just take a piece of iron and a file, and you file it, you get iron dust. You put the iron dust in a, in a salt shaker, you sprinkle it on a piece of paper, and every time you sprinkle, you get a random pile of iron dust. And then I say, wait, wait, put a magnet underneath the piece of paper. And now I sprinkle the iron filing, and guess what? I get this beautiful pattern of the, of the magnetic field, okay? And the fact is this, uh, did the pattern come from the iron filings? The answer is no. The pattern came from the invisible magnetic field. Think of the spirit as the invisible magnetic field that is giving pattern to your cells, which are like iron filings. If I change the field, I'm going to the cells will the, the cells will conform to the change of the field. So I don't need to change you. I just have to be in touch with your spirit. And I say, well, where's your spirit? I say, well, I'm, uh, wherever you are right now, that's where you physically are. But your spirit is everywhere. So I'm immersed in your spirit right now. Wow, that's pretty powerful. Absolutely. It's always been this way historically, and it's only in, you know, with Western science where the concept of the field, uh, it, it's very interesting because, it, matter of fact, we're using the word field, aren't we? Mm -hmm. uh, and field is a physics term. I said, what does it mean? I said, define the word field, and it's like invisible moving forces that shape the physical world. Okay? So magnetic field shape the physical iron filings. I go, yeah. But then I go, what is the word spirit? Oh. Invisible moving forces that shape the physical world. It's like field and spirit are essentially the same thing, except spirit had no scientific connotation to it. It was they understood something was out there and something was influential, but there was no scientific basis for it. Now we have quantum physics, or we have a scientific name. It's called field, but guess what? It's still doing the same thing that the word spirit implied without the science behind it. Mm. Mm. You know, we had a group called Energy Healing Group of Europe on uh, my show, and they actually do corporate healing, which I find fascinating because they get permission of the people within the corporation, and they work on bringing that energy into alignment so that everybody's sharing their same ideals. It seems like this could work even on a larger basis. Uh, it does. That's why a mass response can change the world, and it could arise from something like the Arab Spring. It just it started somewhere, and it global all of a sudden. Why? Because people got pulled into it. The field. Wow. And we're we're this is what's happening around the world. We're we're changing the energy field, and that's why the old structure, the old iron filings, are falling apart because they don't they're not supported by the new energy field. Mm -hmm. and so our evolution is. Uh, a manifestation of a change in the field followed by a change in the physical. Wow. Well, I'm definitely thrilled that Energy Healing Group is a big fan of Bruce Lipton because they quote you all the time. They just love you. <laughs> oh, I so appreciate those. Just from what you told me, cha changing the world in that way is so required. 
uh, and such an important job, and, and I'm glad they're taking it on because uh, it, that's exactly how it's going to happen. We're going to change the beliefs, and we're going to have a field. The whole thing is going to change. Oh, gosh. This has been so wonderful. Dr. Bruce Lipton, as usual, it is so wonderful to talk to you. I can't thank you enough. Please keep up the good work. Oh, I so I'm so happy to have this opportunity to speak with you and your audience because we this is the positive news. You know, everyone sees the negative stuff. It's like no, if you focus on that, that's what you're going to manifest. We're going to now focus on there's an alternative way out. We are powerful beings. We are creators. We're part of God. Never been able to be separated from God except by people who thought they could make some money in between. Uh. <laughs> That's true. And I do want to remind everybody of your book coming out in May 2013, The Honeymoon Effect, The Science Creating Heaven on Earth. Is there any way we can pre-order this book? I, I have no idea. I'm so, I was so hoping that uh, Hay House would put it out on Valentine's Day. And it's funny because I just uh, talked with the German publishers, uh, and they even said to me, we should put this out on Valentine's Day. And I thought, That's exactly. <laughs> and so uh, the German edition will be available on Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, that doesn't help me, but I am going to get it. That's going to be the first book I get in May. So thank you again, Bruce. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Joe. And to all my wonderful listeners, just remember the whole moral of this episode is that it doesn't matter who gets elected. It only matters that we reprogram our mind to create a beautiful new world. I'm ready. Join me. We'll see you next week. Have a great one. Bye-bye for now. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back next week with another great show from Law of Attraction Talk Radio. If you'd like to comment on tonight's show, send an email to jules at loaradionetwork.com and have a great week.